Missouri Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill was part of last night's roll call, and she's with us at the National Constitution Center. Senator, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Here we are in the birthplace of America. I was with your delegation last night when Hillary Clinton went over the top. What was the moment like for you? You know, I really miss my mom. Uh, you know, my mother um, convinced me when I was very young that I was supposed to run the world. And she was constantly telling me that women need to be more aggressive about taking their place in politics. She was active. You know, I thought everybody stuffed envelopes when they were 10 years old. <laughs> you know, I thought everybody, you know, had were, were going out and giving out nail files at speeches for candidates. So I really um, felt for women across this country who have participated in the political process but never really been convinced that we could actually do this. And so it was an incredibly emotional moment, I think, not just for me, but for women across this whole country. Well, women and men were crying in the yes, hall last they night. Were. I, I just think it was one of those things that it just made you so proud to be a girl, is what I was saying to people last night. I met a woman who was 75 who said, I knew this was gonna happen, I just didn't think I would live to see it. That's and I think right. that's what struck so many people in the hall yesterday. That's exactly right. I think that, um, and when you think about it, the woman who announced the vote for Arizona, yeah. her due, when she was born, we didn't even have the right to vote in this country. Um, so in her lifetime, we have gone from not even having a say to now having, I think, the strongest and most capable candidate for president this country has seen in a long How time. How important was it to have Bernie Sanders play the role that he played yesterday? First of all, I'm really proud of the way this process has worked. I, I, I was impatient with Hillary Clinton supporters on Monday because everyone was expecting all these people who worked their hearts out for Bernie Sanders, many of whom participated for the first time in the process. And it's hard to be a delegate, to get to be a delegate. They're all here and we expect them the first night of the convention to go, yay, Hillary. Yay. I mean, that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. Of course they wanted to have their voices heard. We should respect that and honor that. And I think last night when Bernie did what he did, um, bless his heart, uh, he did the right thing, and it was. You, if you were in the hall, you felt it. The there unity, was incredible unity. Is the unity sign sealed and delivered then? To uh, it lead is. This? They'll be outliers, and they'll try very hard to make it look like that they're a meaningful group. I mean, the people that walked out last night, they had the right to do that and protest, but it was a very small group. It wasn't hundreds. So it what was did you find out? What did you think when you heard about the emails and what was happening at the DNC? I was very disappointed. Um, I have not seen evidence that they actually put their thumb on the scale in terms of influencing how any primaries turned out. But it was wrong, and the people responsible for those emails should be removed from their positions. Bill Clinton's speech last night, you know, he's been called the explainer in chief. Last election, it was about Romney's record. This time, it was about his wife going all the way back to falling in love with her in 1971. Did you know those, so many of those stories that he I told us? Most of us knew those stories, um, and I think um, I think it was a bold move, but I think it was very important. Bold? Because, why? Well, I think, frankly, to go into all of their personal romance, and I mean that's something very non-traditional. You don't typically see that but from necessary. a former president. Right. But I think it was necessary, Charlie. I do. I think because. People have, he's right, people are seeing her as a two-dimensional person because the attacks have been so relentless and for so long and, you know, just demonizing her. So pulling her out of that and showing what a great wife and mother and leader she's been all these years. But why is that so important. hard, Senator? Because the people that know her say she's funny, she's warm, she's very caring, but to the American public, they don't know that side of her. Why do you think that is after all of this time? I think because she got attacked early and often. She got very defensive and knew she had to exude strength. And I think she is so focused on exuding strength, it is hard for her to show vulnerability. Where do you stand on TPP? Well, I think we've got to obviously, if we're going to do trade deals, it has to be really aggressive in terms of our values. And so and TPP was not for you. I, I, I voted for the fast track, right. but I think we've got work to do. I agree with, with our candidate for president that TPP in its current form needs more work before we can do it. But we have to make sure, I'm from an agriculture state, but we got to make sure we have markets. But jumping on the fact that Terry McAuliffe said Well, Terry McAuliffe he, shouldn't have said what he said, and Terry McAuliffe made a huge mistake, and Terry McAuliffe is wrong. That's the what John Podesta is, said, too. That's We're friends, the, but he's wrong. 
take that. He's yeah, wrong. Take that. Take that. But it yeah. fed that impression of trust about Hillary Clinton that yes. she'll say one thing on the campaign trail and then when she's president, she'll do something else. Well, what I think we've shown in this convention that she has been consistent in her passion for children and families, for children and families that don't have a voice. And I believe that she will, in fact, make sure that our products have a market around the world, but it's done in a way that's fair to the American worker. Thanks. May I say you have the best glasses at the table? <laughs> Every time I see you, I go, I want to hey, go to where you go. You've got the best shoes at the table. <laughs> I want those well, shoes. I'm not so sure about yeah. that. Uh, Charlie, Charlie has on his, no, no, Charlie has on his <laughs> Under Armour sneaks. Yeah. You know. In bright blue. Thank you for joining us. You bet. Thank you, Thank you guys. Nice uh -huh. yeah. And our special primetime coverage begins tonight at 10, 9 central. We'll hear speeches from President Obama, Vice President Biden, and Vice Presidential nominee Tim Kaine. You can find continuous coverage of the Democratic Convention on our streaming news network, CBSN.